All right, welcome everybody. So I think today we're going to start on a new power tool refurb slash restoration. So I picked up this AEG HBSC 75S off eBay. And when I picked it up, they said it wasn't working. They said that the belt was coming off uh, when they started up. So we'll have to figure out what's going on there. I'm not a, not a belt sander expert by any means. But hopefully it's something I can figure out pretty easily. But this thing is a, is a pretty large belt sander. And um, this is actually one of the later AEG models. This, this probably was probably from the mid-90s, I would guess. Would be the vintage of this era. So there's a couple of interesting things about this, this model. If you look at FezTool, they currently saw a model in Europe that is pretty much an exact clone of this. It doesn't look like they made any changes to it. And that belt sander sells for probably around $600, $700. So if you can pick these up, you know, if you see one for, you know, anywhere between $50 and $100, that's still a pretty good deal, even for a belt sander this old, because these things are really built like tanks. And this one actually has the... The feet actually came with these feet, which I don't remember if these were an option or not, but these allow you basically to use it on the bench like this. And those are those can be taken off just by some thumb screws and used as a regular belt sander. Now I know I got some other projects that I really probably need to finish. The um, concrete saw is one of them, but I consider that low priority because really don't have a need for a concrete saw at the moment. It was just kind of a project to restore it. Uh, but I do need a I do need to get a new belt sander. So here here's my old belt sander. It's actually the story behind this back when I w when I bought Craftsman tools and at the time I believe there's like a five year warranty or something so it broke right before that warranty ended. And I went to go get another one, and this was the one they gave me because they didn't make the uh, the old one. So this one is looks like the date on here is 2007. I thought it was a little bit earlier than that, but I guess that's when I got it. So yeah, it, it, this one broke again after about the same period, three, four years. And I just haven't had a need for really a belt sander. I've been getting by on Orville sanders uh, since then. The interesting thing I want to point out is look at the look at the delt, the difference here in these wheels in the diameter of these wheels. And like I said, I'm not an expert in belt sanders, so I don't know what the advantage is on on these wheel sizes if the larger ones are more for more industrial use or not. Even though I'm exchanging one abandoned brand for another, I'd much rather have these AG ones. What I like to do when anytime I buy these power tools, I really like to go through them. Just to make sure there's no problems that could develop in the future. And I've always just liked taking things apart, even if it's not necessary to take it apart. Just for my own curiosity. So first thing I notice is this cord. It's totally rotten. I mean, I'm looking... It looks like the. it's just the outer jacket, though. That seems to be damaged. And that's just from probably UV, possibly... Breaking that down over time, it could be from water. I guess we'll try plugging it in. See if we can simulate the fall condition that was described. All right, let's see what happens. All right, so yeah, the belt is definitely coming off there. So usually there's like some kind of adjustment here you can make. All right, so let's, let's just take this thing totally off. All right, I think I see the problem. So it looks like somebody's put maybe some tape or something on these wheels to try to even that out. And there could be a, a bigger problem. So I'm looking in there at that belt, and it doesn't even look like the right size belt is on there. So this thing's definitely got some issues, but I'm glad I picked it up because... Uh, it makes them more interesting to try to fix these things when you find them. So the first thing I usually do on these is I take off the power cord so it doesn't get in the way. 
so I don't accidentally plug it in and kill myself. So we got a lot of crap in here. So you can definitely tell this was a later model because at that time they were really starting to looks like cut cost. Because in the earlier AGs these would not have been self-tapping. They would have had like uh, threaded inserts in there. So you definitely see the quality was starting to go down at this point. But I don't know how they got managed to get so much sawdust in this um, electrical compartment. I thought these were kind of supposed to be kind of sealed from the uh, rest of it. Yeah, I think somebody's been in this thing at some point. Because they look at the, um, this looks like PVC coated wire right here, this blue wire. It looks really out of place. And this is more of a, uh, like a neoprene type insulation here on the power cord. How swollen that is, uh, that insulation. So that's almost like it got wet or something like that in there. Just look up here. So that's probably uh, your mark card, typical mark card switch they would make for them. So it looks like there's a date on there of 1, 0187. So this, this thing might be a little bit older than I thought it was. Next thing let's take a look at is uh, so we can take this cover off with the belt on here. Man, this thing's really had a hard life. I think there's a Phillips screw at the end there, but it was so so much crap in there. I can't. It was hard. It's hard to tell. It looks like it was. So I guess that belt is in okay condition. Or I say they didn't think it was the right size. I saw this gap right here. And also this, this little washer down here is not quite touching the bell. There's a little bit of play. So we'll have to see if we can get a parts list and um, check on that. Let's see if I can take these wheels off. So generally these things are... Um, one is reverse threaded, so it looks like it's this. The big wheel is reverse threaded. So yeah, those splines look pretty good. Not really see any issues with those, and that one also is reverse threaded. I don't know if that's wear or just dried up grease. So I think I see the issue here. Look right here at this bronze bushing. See how walloped out that is on this inside portion right here. So that's probably why they added this tape here to try to counteract that imbalance that was happening right there. So it looks like the shaft looks okay. It looks like it was probably just rubbing out this bronze and that's what this actually is. This is it's possibly some like melted uh, you know, fused bronze on there. And the one on the other side looks okay. So that's just strange how it kind of just all the all the wear was just concentrated on this one bushing instead of evenly wearing it on both so hopefully there's not like a balance problem with this shaft that we have to fix so let's see if this thing sometimes these will screw all the way out and then this roller will just pop right off so I definitely didn't pull the roller off but got this piece out over here we'll take this piece off some kind of wear surface for the uh, for the belt it looks like these two screws right here are holding in that entire uh, belt tensioning mechanism. Yep, there it came right out. So I think I'll try to 
it looks like this wheel is holding in with this pin. Let's see if it'll just tap out. So it looks like they uh, added this tape to try to you know, self-balance the uh, these wheels. For... But hopefully we can um, reuse these. So these do have, it looks like some bronze uh, bushings in it as well. But those ones don't look really water wallered out like the uh, the other one was. So there we go. There's where I think the bronze bushing was really rubbing against on that one piece. So we should be able to take this whole top assembly off. It looks like it's just held in by a couple of screws. So if you look down in this compartment right here, there's a washer in here. I don't know where it came from. So I'm not sure if that was added to one of these for balance purposes or what. Because I don't see any shims anywhere else, so it probably came from this one right here. So we'll have to make a note of that. I think I'm going to try to clean this up first to see how I'm going to get these bushings out. But I can see down in there, there's lots of little specks of uh, bronze or brass that came off these that are in there. So. I'm thinking it was probably just a lack of maintenance. Probably just got some dirt or something in there and then it started rubbing rubbing the bronze off. But it only looks to be a problem on this side. This side looks okay, but if we're going to replace this one, we'll probably just do the other one as well. So check this out. It looks like some kind of retaining clip coming through that hole there. We'll have to see what that is. It seems kind of unusual to me. Looks like we got about 12 or so screws to take out for this next piece. So we'll go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. So go ahead and pull the screws out here. Alright, so looks like we're able to open her up. Man, this thing is pretty, pretty dirty. So it's interesting they don't have an all metal gearbox on this. It looks like it's uh, plastic. It's very surprising. It looks like at one time there was supposed to be some kind of silicone seal sealing this gearbox out, but that has since been uh, degraded, and that's why you see so much gunk everywhere in here. And I was just wondering how you get the brushes off, and it looks like there are some panels under here. So we'll go ahead and take take these feet off now. So now we can get a little better look at this. So, yeah, underneath here there are screws to take off these covers, which allows you to access the brushes. So you don't have to go through all this just to service those. So you can see the shaft goes all the way through, through the fan, and then through a bearing, which turns a drive, which is kind of in a, supposed to be in like a sealed compartment, which turns this big reduction gear which turns this shaft which will in turn turn this wheel right here which will attach this belt which turns this bigger wheel and that'll actually turn the roller so there's a lot of reduction that goes through here it looks like to get the, the speeds that you need and it looks like there is a circuit board right here um, with a little speed controller on it. So before we push forward any further, let's go ahead and take these brushes out. So let's go ahead and see what kind of condition these are in. And they seem pretty pretty worn down. So we'll have to see if we can even find replacements for these. So I think part of the problem why there's so much dust in here is it looks like the way this is designed it looks like this little port right here is where the dust actually goes from the from the sander so let's see if we can take that out yeah so the dust will go down in there uh, which comes 
should come right through here. These fan blades will catch that dust and blow it out this port right here. And the way the armature cools off, it looks like it takes some input vents from here and it uses the other side of the of the fan blades here. And that bearing uh, does not feel very good at all. It's barely moving. So we're probably going to have to pull that bearing off and replace that guy. This one feels alright, but now that we're in here we might as well pull all of them off. So let's see if we can get the circuit board out. And then we got a little speed controller here that's indexed on this pot. So there's probably not much to this really. Switch. So there's another pot over here. I wonder what this is for. Is that some kind of calibration for the speed? Well, I like how I like how serviceable this board is because um, most of the speed controllers you say see today are really they're just potted, so you can't service them. But you can see here this this MOSFET is uh, riveted right to the heatsink. And it looks like you probably could replace that if you really wanted to. And the heatsink is riveted to the board, but I don't see anything under it. And then there's just a couple of capacitors, a couple of resistors, which is probably for the voltage divider for the speed control. And that's really all that's to this, really. So I don't know if there's if there's some kind of feedback sensor, but I don't see anything else going to the board here, unless there's something underneath it here. Because that, that kind of ties in right here with this little bearing. But I don't see anything under there. I don't see any traces uh, coming through. So I, I think it's just a dumb speed controller. But boy, you got a lot of, a lot of dirt in here. And you can see a lot of it infiltrated the, uh, the, compart the, uh, the gearbox here. Because you see this little... This is supposed to be the gasket. I don't know if that was just a silicone, you know, they just kind of um, dropped that in there during production. Um, but the channel is, that channel is big enough I could probably find an O-ring material that will fit in there. Or a gasketing material. So we'll go ahead and pull this out now. It looks like they got SKF bearing right there from Italy. And a little tiny needle bearing over here and this one is a INA from Germany and that one feels kind of scratchy too this one feels okay but considering how much debris is in here it's probably a good idea to replace all the bearings in this in this thing alrighty well I think that's uh, that's it for this teardown of this unit Definitely looks like I got some work ahead of me. Um, so really to summarize, I think the work that's involved, you know, other than obviously cleaning everything, is to figure out how to get these uh, bushings out. Got to replace those. Hopefully it's just something off the shelf. I need to find some kind of gasketing material in here to seal this a little bit better and replace all of the bearings that are in here. And I'm glad uh, I'm glad the person didn't throw this away when it was broken to uh, allow somebody else to fix it because it's a really it's a, it's a nice sander once you actually get it up and running. So vintage about this looks to be about 1987. I'm seeing a couple a couple mold marks from '87 in here around that time period, 1987. Very nice sander. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and uh, catch you guys next time.